hi guys so today i will explain the q property macro so uh, we'll go through this uh, help to see what is uh, the q property macro so you can type here q property q underscore property in help section and you will find this page so we'll read what is the definition of or what is the description given for the q property so this macro is used for declaring properties in classes that inherit q object okay so the main thing here is uh, like these properties are declared in the cpp classes and those classes should be inherited by q object okay so this is one thing properties behave like class data members so uh, properties behave behave means they are not the class data member but they behave in the same manner because the q properties are basically uh, we can say alias of the class members class data members but they have additional features accessible through the meta object system so they have additional features uh, through which we can access them in the QML side also okay so this is the uh, basically uh, uh, the way uh, through which we can declare a Q property in our CPP class so these are some type of uh, like you can say macro here so like type name is the property so we'll see it uh, like what type of parameters uh, are useful basically to uh, in the real scenario or in the normal case what type of parameter we have to use for this queue property so <clears throat> for that actually I have created one program here uh, because we can't make the long videos so that's why I have already prepared some example here and uh, okay and first i will run the program and i will show you what this program application basically looks like after building and uh, running and what it do <laughs> yeah so you can see here i have created three text fields and one button okay so these text fields will be basically uh, the value of these uh, text field will be coming from the Q property okay I will create one Q property in C++ and those that property value I am using in these text field values so basically I am binding the Q property to the properties of text of this these text fields and if you will see uh, press me to update the property value so this is the button on which uh, basically on click of this button I am updating the Q property declared in C++ okay so let's go through the code <coughs> so this is our code like um, I created basically one column here and in this column I have uh, three text fields like you already seen in the uh, application and one button one button for uh, basically updating the property to update the property so three text fields three text fields and one button okay <coughs> now three text fields and one button so button will on click of this button we will update the property means increment the property and uh, according to the value of the property this text will be changed so you can see here if I click here so these values are getting changed okay so now we'll go to the our C++ so this is the class basically in which uh, we are basically creating the queue property okay 
so if you remember during the help section i told you that the cube if you want to use the cube property it is necessary to inherit the cube object in your class so here uh, if you'll see uh, this cube property is declared property type of integer and this is the read function basically the property read function which we have to basically implement or create the definition and then write set property is a write function which can which will be called whenever you update that property from qml and this is our notify signal so if you see notify so this signal is basically to notify if there is any update in the property then this signal should be emitted to notify the other like or uh, qml or other c plus plus objects <laughs> that this property has been changed so like i said this read function we have to implement so we have given the declaration here and uh, write function as well we have given the description as pro this read function only uh, for the like read purpose so we have not given any parameter here no need to give so we only need to return the property here from this function and this write function because it needs one parameter because we have integer property to bind it so this uh, function will be used to set the value of that property this is the signal to notify the change okay we have to declare that here now if you remember that the q property basically works on the class variable okay so we have created one class variable here i property and the whole thing of this property will work on this one so whenever this read function will be called so this function if you'll see the definition of this function this function is returning the m underscore i property which is a class variable and in the setter also write function also we are updating this m i property so here you can see if m i property is different then the value we received in this function then only we are updating the value and we are emitting the signal notify signal okay so that's it actually so the main thing we have to do in this uh, class q property declaration creation of read and write functions signal and one proper class variable and then the definition of these property uh, read and write functions <laughs> okay and emitting the signal from write function and next thing we have created a class which has our q property and uh, how to access that in qm that part is remaining so for that we have to expose our class object to the uh, qml context or we can say yeah so for that we have to include these other files our q property tutorial dot h file and qml context okay that uh, so here we have created our object and then we have uh, set the context property using the engine qml engine application engine this one and root context we got this is the qml context and uh, because of this one only we have to include this qml context if we don't include then it will say that unknown type i will show you <coughs> yeah member access into incomplete uh, incomplete type qql context so we have to include that then only we can call these functions so now what we have done is we have um, exposed our class function uh, object 
to the QML using this property name. So CPP object, if you'll see this uh, set context property parameters, you'll see QString reference and Q object pointer. So Q string reference is your property name or your uh, uh, CPP object name, which can be uh, used to access your CPP object okay, in the QML. And Q object pointer is your uh, object which you want to expose to the QML. Now, after this, we can use this CPP object, whatever we have exposed here. We can use this CPP object here, CPP property. So basically, we bind here the uh, Q property which we created in this CPP object to the component of like uh, to the uh, text property of this text component so we created three text fields and we <coughs> bind basically uh, these properties here and on this button so whenever this uh, basically property gets changed and uh, basically this binding happens so it will call the read function of this property this this function i will show you okay so whenever whenever this binding will get execute so it will call the read function and whenever we click on the button press me to update the property value button so we basically updating the property so this statement basically updating the q property so uh, this time the set function will be called this function okay i will show you after running the application see here three times the property read function has been called this function because we have attached this property to three components okay and they got the default value of the property which is zero so they are showing it zero here now i will press this button and uh, then you can see at the left side a uh, setter function will be called see set property ipr1 this one and then this then these property function again call because we emitted the signal and automatically the uh, QML uh, calls the read function of that property so see see the uh, benefit of the Q property basically uh, it is tightly basically coupled with the uh, ui components so in the real scenario every ui component will be updated through cpp only because uh, we will have uh, uh, like requirement from like some some status of some sensor or something so that value will come from the uh, lower layer or sensor itself and then we will show the value of the sensor on the ui so that will happen using the cure property uh, so i hope uh, you got the idea of cure property here so that's it for today thank you so much bye bye